Good day learner, I am teacher Noli. In this video, we will be discussing about peace and order. Get ready to listen and get your mojo. The following are our objectives for this lesson. 1. Describe the effects of human-induced calamities and other hazards. 2. Cite the effects of absence of peace and order on the health and well-being of the people. 3. Cite conditions that disrupt peace and order in a place, for example, hostilities, civil disobedience, and strife. And 4. Practice precautionary measures in times of disruption of peace and order. In the screen, you can see two photos. Now, I would like to ask a question. Where do you prefer to live? Is it in A or in B? I'm sure you will choose the photo on option A. You might say that it looks nicer to live there based on its appearance. But what if I tell you that those two photos were taken on the same place and on the same spot? The photo on the right is actually the present look of a place located in Aleppo city, Syria. This is the effect of the ongoing war in Syria, which started in 2011. That means the war has been happening for 10 years now. Just imagine how much it affected the country. This situation is an example of a lack of peace and order. We mentioned about peace and order. Let's define these two terms separately. Peace is an encompassing term. Thus, it can be defined in many ways. According to Merriam Webster Dictionary, peace includes harmonious personal relations which lead to an absence of hostility, war, or any form of civil disturbance in a community. Based on this definition, we can see that there is peace when there is no war or fights between people. In the background, we can see people living in peace. While order, according to Cambridge Dictionary, is achieved in a situation in which rules are obeyed and people do what they are expected to do. We can now see that these two are related. For example, when people are following the law, there is an order, including peace. So the question is, is it really possible to achieve peace and order in our present world? To answer this question, let us look at this place. What can you say about it? It looks really peaceful and orderly, isn't it? This is Iceland. This place is considered the most peaceful country in the world since 2008. This is according to the Yearly Global Peace Index Report of Institute for Economics and Peace, or IEP. So, what makes Iceland a very peaceful country? According to the Global Finance Magazine, Iceland achieved its title because of low crime rates, limited military forces, excellent welfare system, desirable education, and positive sense of well-being among people. So these are just some of the factors which contributes to the high level of peace and order on Iceland. However, peace and order needs to be maintained, and there are times when it is disrupted. So what are the conditions and events that disrupt peace and order? First in our list is hostility. This happens when there is a fight, opposition, or war between two groups or even countries. When we talk about hostilities, we first think of wars. But technically, simple fights such as when a person who hates you suddenly punches your face can be considered hostility. Now, let's talk about one of the unforgettable events that happened in the Philippines. In 2017, a confrontation between pro-ISIS militants 
and the government forces in Marawi City resulted in a dangerous battle, which lasted for five months. According to Inquirer.net, this is the longest urban war in Philippine history. Many reports revealed that one of the causes of this battle is inter in intra-religious violence. But International Alert Philippines said it is also a combination of political, identity, and shadow economy-related causes. Nonetheless, this deadly battle destroyed the peace and order in Marawi City. Second in our list is civil disobedience. This occurs when people refuse to obey the demands and commands of the government or occupying power. But unlike hostilities, civil disobedience happens without resorting to violence. I'm sure there's one familiar event that comes into your mind, so let's take a look at it. I'm talking about the EDSA People Power Revolution, which occurred in 1986. This event highlighted the refusal of the people to recognize the dictatorship of Ferdinand Marcos. This may seem like a justifiable event, unlike the Battle of Marawi, but the revolution still disrupted the peace in order. Last on our list is a strike, which takes place when employees stop their work in order for their employers to comply with their demands. An example of strike happened in 2019 when employees at Amazon Fulfillment Center stopped their work, calling their employers to improve work conditions. In the Philippines, workers actually have the right to strike, according to the Section 3, Article 13 of the Philippine Constitution. But there are legal requirements that need to be considered. Nonetheless, whatever the cause of the strike, it is still disrupt the flow of work thus affecting peace and order on that workplace. Hostilities, civil disobedience, and strike are just among the various situations that disrupt peace and order. Now, what is really the effect of disruption of peace and order? As an example, let's go back to the battle on Marawi City. This photo is taken in Gumisa Avenue in 2010. And this is what the place looked like after the battle in Marawi. These two photos simply show that the event greatly affected Marawi. According to the 2020 report of the Asian Development Bank, the event caused a lot of injuries and deaths and because many houses and establishments are destroyed, it is understandable that the poverty is increased. This poverty increase also led to a lack of enough water and food and worsening of diseases. Not only did the battle in Marawi hurt the people physically, but also psychologically, as it left trauma, stress, and fear. The effects listed on the screen is the effects of hostility. Take note that the effects of absence of peace in order will also depend on the type of event that caused it. Now, what then can we do if ever we'll be stuck in the middle of a war, for example? The following are some precautionary measures we can do in times of disruption of peace in order. First, Remember that safety is your priority. Unless you are in the army, you should stay away from fighting as much as possible. Relocation is also necessary in some circumstances. And of course, you should know the safe zones. The goal of this is to reduce the casualty brought by events such as war. Second, be updated and listen to government warnings advice and news from the government. Information is critical factor in war. It will help you devise a plan to survive and the lack of information might put you in danger. While information is critical, preparation will still do a great role in keeping you safe. It is always good to stock up emergency supplies such as food, water, and radio. 
there's often little advance warning about a war breaking out, so you may not have the opportunity to stock up on supplies. In any survival situation, maintaining your composure and ability to think logically is a key. Letting despair and grief take over your mind will make logical thinking harder. You can reduce your stress and anxiety by being with friends and family members. To sum up our lesson, here are our four points to remember. 1. In simpler terms, peace in order is a measurement of how safe a place is. 2. There are various events that can disrupt peace in order. Some of them are hostilities, civil disobedience, and strife. Number three, the effect of absence of peace and order depends on the type of event that caused it. And number four, in times of disruption of peace and order such as in war, your priority is your survival. Do this practice activity to help you understand our lesson better. You may think and write of an example of event actual or imaginary, that disrupt peace and order. Then, try to identify its effects and some precautionary measures you can take to stay safe. If you do not have any questions, you can now answer the activity proper and evaluation sheet in your module. You can always ask your facilitator for assistance. Before we end this video, let me first share this quote from Martin Luther King Jr. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Again, this is Teacher Nolly. Thank you for listening. Stay safe all.